Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for discussion for today is the B series. So, guys, please go through the A series before you come to this video. The video link of the A series I have included under the description. In these two video A and B series, we actually discuss the effect of shielding against electric field or capacity coupling. This will be the part 13 series discussion on EMC. If you are keen on EMC, please go through the previous video under the description. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. This is the equivalent circuit that we have arrived at the A series video. So again, please go through the A series video if you have not seen it. In the A series, we actually derive how we actually arrive at this equivalent circuit. This is the noise that drive the conductor one. This is the noise that couple from conductor one to conductor two. So this BN is our objective. Okay, our objective is to find the value of BN. When we actually want to find the value of BN, firstly, we need to consider the combined emittance of these two capacitors that are in parallel. So let's start how we actually can arrive to find the value of Bn. Firstly, what is the emittance of capacitor? Okay, the emittance of capacitor is simply 1 over j omega c. So from here, you can see that we actually obtain the emittance of capacitor C2g and C2s. Next, okay, this is how we can calculate when the two capacitors are in parallel. This is what we have learned in our school day. Okay, and I substitute the emittance of capacitor into this equation here. So uh, 1 over j omega C2s inside here, which I got this. 1 over j omega C2g inside, and that's how I get this. Same for the bottom here. Next, I want to do a common factor. Okay, so what I need to do is this one, I multiply by j omega c 2g and this one I multiply by j omega c2s. That's how I arrive at this equation. From here, I see that they are equal term. This and this are equal, so I cancel it off. And this is the final equation. Okay, so this is the combine of these two capacitor that are in parallel. Next, okay, since this is our objective Bn, how can we get the Bn? Okay, we actually apply this voltage divider rule. Okay, we use V in multiplied by the total emittance of these two capacitors that are in parallel. Okay, over, we also need to consider this emittance of C12, okay, which is written here. And again, this is the parallel of these two capacitors. Okay, this term, okay, we have calculated earlier on, which is this term here. So this is what we have calculated here. So what we need to do is we just substitute into this equation. That's how we arrive at this equation. Okay, next, okay, I just want to make a common factor again. So this one, I'll multiply by this J omega C2G plus C2S. This one, I'll multiply by J omega C12. Okay, I just take the common factor, which is J omega. So this is what I arrived. Everything's still intact. Okay, from here again, I'll see some common term. For example, this J omega C2G plus C2S. Okay, I can cancel off. This JW, I also can cancel off. So what is shown over here? So I simplify my equation. So this is the equation. B in C12 over C2G plus C2S plus C12. So this is the noise that couple from conductor 1 to conductor 2 with shielding. So let's quickly pull K1 without shielding. This is the circuit that we had derived earlier on. Okay, so you compare them term by term, okay, you can actually see that there is some significant shielding effect okay, if the 
conductor that protruding out from the shield is considered short or length is less than certain wavelength, which I will discuss later on. Okay, you can see that okay, this with shielding is not a function of frequency. Okay, without shielding, you can see that it's actually a function of frequency. But with shielding, you actually remove the noise source as a function of frequency. Okay, so this actually reduce the noise source. Okay, you also see that some of the terms are missing. For example, the R term actually all missing. So with this, we conclude that there is some form of shielding effectiveness as long as we keep the expose of the conductor out of the shielding as short as possible. In conclusion, okay, for good electric field shielding, it is necessary to minimize the length of the center conductor that extend beyond the shield. Okay, to provide a good ground on the shield, if length of cable okay, is much shorter than the lambda over 20, okay, so single point grounding is sufficient. Okay, but I still encourage you to put two point of grounding. Okay, if length of cable L is bigger than lambda over 20, Okay, you probably need multiple point grounding, then it's sufficient. Okay, so this is a conclusion. In order to meet the shielding effectiveness, okay, you take a look okay, on the exposed conductor. Okay, if it's less than this lambda over 20, therefore you just need to have single point of grounding. Okay, if it's bigger than lambda over 20, you probably need to have at least two point of grounding. Next. Okay, we're going to discuss on case three. Okay, conductor extend beyond the shield and the conductor has finite resist resistance to ground. Okay, so this is what you mean. This part, the expose of conductor extend beyond the shield quite significantly. Okay, and then this is the equivalent circuit. Okay, I guess by now you won't have any problem how we can actually derive this equivalent circuit. Okay, let's quickly do this. This is V1 here. So I have this C1G here. So next, the shield is grounded. So this C1S is actually grounded, which is also included here. Okay, we have the coupling coefficient from conductor one to two. So it's represented by C12, which is here. Okay, over here, you can see that there is a conductor two coupling coefficient to the ground, okay, which is represented by this C2S. We also have conductor two coupled to the ground. Okay, so which is represented by C2G here. Okay, and then over here, there is a resistance, which is also included in this equivalent circuit. Okay, so you can see that, okay, these two are in parallel with the source. So I actually can animate them away okay, in order to get this equivalent circuit. Okay, so how to get the noise that couple over here? Again, you need to calculate the total emittance of these three items. And then you apply the voltage divider rule, you should be able to obtain the Vn, the noise voltage, okay, which is found over here. Okay, so these are with shielding. Okay, so again, I have include without shielding outcome on the right here. So if you really compare them, okay, you actually realize that okay, there is no significant improvement with shielding. Okay, which means that you might as well save the cost of shielding because you can see that. Term by term, they are almost the same. Okay, probably only the coupling coefficient C12 actually reduced. Other than that, I believe most of the thing is about the same. So you compare against low frequency and high frequency. At low frequency, it is exactly the same. Okay, at high frequency, more or less, I would say it's about the same. Just have some on the shielding C2S over here. So in conclusion, Okay, same situation as unshield cable, okay, except that mutual capacitance C12 between conductor 1 and 2 is greatly reduced okay, because conductor 2 is partially shielded. Okay, with this, okay, I'd like to end my discussion.